is uh, the 24th of July, 2024. Uh, it's, uh, what time is it? It's 7 o'clock, 7 a.m. I'm on my way to St. Louis. Got to work on my daughter's car. The trailing arms have some bad, uh, oh, bushings, and we're going to replace the rear shocks at the same time because they're easy to get to, and they got a hundred and something thousand miles on them. And it's just time to make sure that she's got a good car to drive. So I'm going there to do that. I got some windows in the back for a friend's garage I picked up at uh, Habitat Restore. Um, and, you know, be, being a blessing because I can be a blessing. Uh, why do I want to talk on this video? What is it that came across my mind? Uh, I believe the Holy Spirit told me that certain people have a desire for God and certain people don't. And we're going to start seeing who those people are, who they really are. Um, there's a wedding that's coming, and it's called the, the, the parable of the wedding, where Jesus says a king has a son who's going to be wed. Okay, the parallel there, for those that don't know it, is that the king, God the Father, has a son Ayasubaraya, Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, the, the anointed of Ayah. And he's going to be married, and there's a bride that's waiting, and there are people that want to attend the wedding. And he says, go and invite the guests. And the servants come back, and they say, well, the, you know, they don't want to come. <laughs> he goes, they don't want to come. Okay, go out and find anybody. Go to the highways where I'm at. You don't see many people on the highways, you know. They're they're in cars. You're not going to talk to them. Go out to the roads. Go out anywhere and get anybody and bring them into my guest as my guests. I want guests for my son's wedding. So what is this? This means that at the time that the bridegroom returns for the bride, the church won't really care. They're the ones who are invited, but they're not responding. Who's going to respond? People who truly want God in their lives, people who truly cannot stand this world anymore, who, who see the absolute BS that's going on everywhere, the hypocrisy in politics, the hypocrisy in religion, religion, not belief. Religion and belief are completely different things. The hypocrisy in religion, the... Uh, Oh, the hirelings behind the pulpit, the people who do this because it's a job and not because it's a, a, uh, a desire of their heart. You know, there are people that do this because this is a desire of my heart. Look, I haven't made a dime doing this. And, well, that's not true. People have helped me along the way. But I'm certainly not a mega pastor. Um, not in it for the money because the money's never been here, but I've always been here. This is what I do because I know it's right. I know it's true. And I can't do anything except tell you what is true. If I tell you something that's not true, it goes against me and I'm going to suffer for it. And I'm not willing to do that. That's just foolishness. And I'm just not that dumb. So, what am I doing here? I'm trying to invite the people that do want to come to the wedding of the king's son those guests who are ready to respond, okay? So, where am I going to find them? Well, I'm not finding them in the churches. I've been to churches all around where I live, and nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. I've had a couple people respond positively, and they then were cold the next couple of days. You know, I cast that seed out there. Uh, it hit ground. It grabbed some dirt, but the sun and the birds and the rest of it just sort of you know, it grew for a moment and then withered. And I'm not going there again. So, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how this is going to reach the people it's going to reach, but that's, that's Ayah's job. You know, I just go out and I throw the seed where it grows and how it grows. That's up to Ayah. And he will see that the right people get it. So the servants come back after being out on the highways and they say, we have found guests for your wedding. They say, we have brought the good and the bad. How do bad people get into heaven? 
bad people aren't bad people. Bad people, even though their actions appear bad, their hearts and their desires are for truth and justice and mercy and all the things that God says we should want and desire in, oh, who is that? Micah 6, 8. Do you not know, oh man, what is what the Lord requires of you? Uh, mercy, love mercy, love righteousness, and walk humbly before God. These people out there that may not be sitting in the churches for good reason are not sitting in the churches because the Holy Spirit is not in the churches. If the Holy Spirit were in the churches, they would be responding to the call for the truth about God's name. They would be responding for the call for the truth about the times in which we live and how close we are to the rapture, the times of Israel's trouble, which is coming up very soon. Not Jacob's trouble, but Israel's trouble. Israel's trouble is going to be surrounded in armies. And we're supposed to look up because our redemption draws nigh. Now, they won't have their trouble just yet. Their trouble's coming three and a half years later, and that's Jacob's trouble. And there is a difference. And the reason I say that is because the Bible mentions Jacob's trouble. I'm mentioning the trouble of the nation of Israel. They will be surrounded in armies. Because Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded in armies, look up. And I know it's time to look up because I know the timing of the generation. And it's not 1948. The generation began in 1961. I'll explain that in another video. But 1961 to 1931 is the 70 years. Back up seven years for the tribulation. You have 2024. That's the start. So this year, about 90 days from now, on the 23rd of October, we have the possibility of being raptured on the seventh day of the, excuse me, on the 22nd day of the seventh Hebrew month which is always the twinkling of the eye. It's always when the Jews stop living in their tabernacles, stop living in their sukkahs, and move into their permanent homes in a flash of light. The sun is shining on my face. I'm getting direct light from the sun. When that sun sets and that direct light stops, that's the moment. That's the twinkling of the eye, the very last bit of light that comes and strikes the eye, and then it's twilight. That's the moment they change from temporary to permanent. Paul says that we change from this temporary body to a permanent body in a flash of light. It's a direct correlation. It's a mirror image of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is why I believe this will happen on Tabernacles. And there's more to that. You have to watch the rest of the videos. But the church, were it filled in the Holy Spirit, would receive this message and understand. They would be reading their Bibles and going, is he right? He's right. Man, he's right. He's right on a lot of stuff. Well, if I'm right on all this stuff, why don't you listen? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Because God knows their hearts. They don't really, they're not really in it for the justice. They're not in it for the mercy. They're not in it for the humility. They're in it for other reasons. The pastors are hirelings. They're in it for the money. The people are there because they want a better life now. They want to live their best life now. Let me tell you, if we live forever and this is my best life now, then I'm screwed. Excuse my language. But I don't want to live my best life now. I want to live the life God has for me now and enjoy the best life, abundant life, in heaven with him for the rest of eternity. These type of pastors, these people that lead, are absolutely lost. No wonder nobody wants to go to church. Jesus says, Ayasubar Ayah says, Come out of her, my people. Come out of this false worship of Babylon. Come out of this ridiculousness that calls itself Christian religion. Have a relationship with Christ himself. Get to know the Holy Spirit. Read the word of God and ask the Spirit to reveal the truth. And know the truth because it's the truth that will set you free. Not your religion. Catholicism will not set you free. The truth will set you free. Methodist Protestantism in its current ilk <coughs> will not set you free. A relationship with Christ in truth will set you free.